Father, I love Onyebuchi. We have promised each other, and we'll get married once he makes enough money. I can't marry someone else. Her father's demeanor shifted to aggression, insisting that this union with Ejike was non negotiable. That night, as the moon cast a soft glow, Norma found solace in confiding in her mother. Tearfully, In the heart of Umudike, where the rustling leaves and warm breeze painted a cement backdrop, lived Noma and Unyebuchi. Their love story echoed through the village, a testament to the depth of their affection. Unyebuchi, at 30, was a diligent man, though his pockets lacked the weight of abundance. Noma, five years his junior, found solace in their shared dreams rather than material wealth. Their love blossomed beyond the praying eyes of the villagers. Rooted in sincerity, Noma, toiling alongside her family, never sought Onyebuchi's riches. Instead, she worked diligently, hand in hand with her mother, father, and sister, embodying the essence of familiar and communal bands. Despite Onyebuchi's modest means, Noma's love for him flourished. She would prepare meals with care and deliver to him, a tangible expression of her devotion. Norma's mother recognized the purity of their union, offering her unwavering support. Dreams held a special place in Norma's heart. She aspired to attend the university, a vision shared by Onyebuchi. Though financial constraints hindered immediate plans, Onyebuchi pledged to send her to school once fortune smiled upon him. Their promises echoed through the village, a commitment to weather life storm together. Norma and Onyebuchi vowed not to part ways, their love standing resilient against the tides of uncertainty. As they faced the challenges of life in Umudike, their promise to be together till eternity became the melody that serenaded the village nights. As the festive period enveloped Umudike in a joyous atmosphere, the city dwellers returned for Christmas, bringing with them a hustle and bustle of urban life. Among them was Ejike, a man of means, adorned with a sizable calm pocket filled with wealth. The news of his arrival spread like wildfire, drawing curious villagers to witness the spectacle. A crowd gathered to welcome Ejike, eager eyes fixated on his opulence. However, Norma, steadfast in her love for Nyebuchi, remained unmoved by the allure of wealth. Her heart belonged to the hard-working man who had captured her affections. Onyebuchi, content and in Norma stayed true, felt a warmth in his heart. The materialistic charm of Ejike held no sway over their love and that realization was a treasure to him. During the festive period, Noma and Onyebuchi strode hand in hand to the market square, where vibrant cultural displays unfolded. Dancers and entertainers painted the air with a kaleidoscope of traditions, and the couple rev reveled in the joyous atmosphere. As laughter echoed through the market square, fate took an unexpected turn. Ejike, amidst the revelry, caught sight of Noma, intrigued by her beauty and the radiance of her joy. He became determined to unravel the mystery of the woman who seemed immune to the allure of his world. Undeterred by the bustling crowd, Ejike approached Noma and Onyebuchi, his eyes fixed on her, unknown to Noma. A new chapter of their story was about to unfold. As a man of wealth set his sight on the girl who had chosen love over opulence, as AGK confidently approached Norma amidst the festive pharaoh, a furrow increased her blow. She stepped back, distancing herself from his advancing presence. Please, let me be. I have a man, Onyebuchi, and I am content with him. I don't need anything else. Undeterred, AGK began to boast about his wealth, attempting to sway Norma with promises of a lavish life. Why stick with that broke boy when you can have everything you desire? I can give you the world, my dear. 
you deserve so much more. Onye Buchi, witnessing the scene unfold, couldn't hold back. He stepped forward, a determined look in his eyes. Stay clear of my woman. She doesn't need your money. She has something more valuable. Love. No, ma. Grateful for Nyebuchi's steadfastness, took his hand as a silent affirmation of the unwavering bond. Together, they turned to leave the market square. Ejike left behind, smiled sheepishly, his pride wounded but not defeated. With a newfound determination, he swore to making Noma his wife, vowing to conquer any obstacle in his pursuit. As the Noma and Onyebuchi walked away, their steps echoed a unity that transcended material wealth leaving A.G.K. pondering the depth of love that has eluded his grasp. In the soft glow of the afternoon sun, Noma returned home to an unexpected sight. Her father and A.G.K. seated in the compound, his car gleaming in the sunlight. Anger welled up within her as she greeted her father and briskly walked away. Later, her younger sister, Nebechi, received a summons to bring Noma back. Reluctantly, Norma returned to face her father's stern gaze. Sit down, Norma. We need to talk. Norma, now sitting, could sense the gravity of the conversation. Her father began speaking about Ejike and his intentions to marry her, a proposal wrapped in the halo of wealth. Ejike is a wealthy man, and he wants to marry you. It's an opportunity for us to escape poverty. You have no choice in this matter. Norma, her heart torn between love and filial duty, resisted. Father, I love Onyebuchi. We have promised each other and we'll get married once he makes enough money. I can't marry someone else. Her father's demeanor shifted to aggression, insisting that this union with Ejike was not negotiable. That night, as the moon cast a soft glow, Noma found solace in confiding in her mother. Tearfully, she encountered the confrontation with her father. Mama, I can't marry Ejike. I love Onyebuchi. I can't betray him. Her mother, a beacon of understanding, reassured her. Don't worry, Norma. I will talk to your father. We will find a way. You have a right to choose the one you love. With her mother's comforting words, Norma found a glimmer of hope in the face of an uncertain future. Trusting that love would prevail over the pressures of circumstance. The next morning, Norma sought solace in the comforting presence of Onyebuchi. She poured her heart out, recounting the struggles she faced with her father's insistence on her marrying Ejike. Onyebuchi, my father is determined to make me marry Ejike, but I can't imagine a life without you. No amount of wealth can replace the love we share. Onyebuchi, though consigned, found reassurance in Norma's unwavering commitment. Norma, as long as we have each other, we can face any challenge. Our love is stronger than any obstacle. They embraced, finding solace in each other's arms. Meanwhile, Norma's mother, torn between loyalty to her husband and her daughter's happiness, approached him with a plea. Please, let Norma marry the one she loves. Happiness is more than wealth. Don't force her into a life she doesn't want. Her husband, unmoved, stood firm in his decision. She will marry AGK, and that's final. It's for the good of her family. Norma's mother, dejected, left the room, her heart heavy with the burden of a decision that threatened to fracture the bonds within her family. As AGK persisted with lavish gifts and money for Norma's father, Mr. Okeke, he accepted the offerings with open hands, assuring Ejike that Norma was his to marry. Norma's mother, burdened by the weight of the situation, couldn't bear to witness the erosion of her daughter's happiness. While she felt a sense of powerlessness, Norma's mother decided to appeal to Norma's sense of duty and compassion. She approached her daughter, her voice tinged with sadness. Norma, I know this is not what you want, but your father has accepted Ejike's proposal. Please consider the family's need and the well-being of your sister. We need this help. Norma, torn between love and familiar duty, felt a surge of emotions. Her mother, 
desperate to avoid conflict, pleaded with her. Your father has threatened to return me to my people if you don't accept AGK. We are at a crossroads and I don't know what else to do. Please, my child, reconsider for the sake of the family. Tears welled up in enormous eyes as she spoke with a heavy heart. I trusted you to make the right decisions for me, Mama. Now you have succumbed to Papa's authority. I can't believe this is happening. Her mother, helpless in the face of familiar expectations, could only watch as the bonds of love strained under the weight of tradition and authority. Days passed without Onebuchi seeing a Noma, and concern grew within him. Unable to bear the uncertainty, he decided to visit Noma's house to check on her. However, what awaited him was a storm of aggression from Mr. Okeke. Mr. Okeke, his face contorted with anger, demanded Onyebuchi leave his house and let Noma be. He insulted Onyebuchi, calling derogatory remarks and making it clear that Noma was to marry Ejike. Onyebuchi, shattered and defeated, left the premises, carrying the weight of rejection and heartbreak. Noma, restrained by her mother, witnessed the scene, her heart breaking as Onyebuchi walked away. In the solitude of her mom, Noma couldn't bear the pain. She penned a letter, pouring her emotions onto paper, and handed it to her younger sister with a plea to deliver it to Onyebuchi. The letter, when Onyebuchi received it, unveiled the depth of Noma's despair. She explained that her father held her hostage, coercing her into marrying Ejike. The ultimatum loomed, comply or face disownment. Onyebuchi, overwhelmed by sorrow, couldn't contain his emotions. He wept for the love they once shared, now shattered by circumstances beyond their control. The words in the letter echoed in his mind, urging him to move on, but the pain of their broken promises lingered, leaving him in a sea of heartache. As the days unfolded, the much-anticipated traditional wedding ceremony between Ejike and Inoma took center stage. The village gathered to witness the union, but the air was thick with tension. Noma, adorned in a traditional attire, wore a facade of false happiness, her eyes betraying the sorrow within. Throughout the ceremony, her face remained etched with bitterness, a stark contrast to Ejike's joyful demeanor. She seemed oblivious to Noma's palpable sadness, reveling in the attention and in the alliance that promised him social standing. In the midst of the ceremony, Onyebuchi made a heart-wrenching appearance. Noma spotted him and tried to run towards him, but Ejike, possessive, held her back. Onyebuchi, unable to bear the sight of Noma in another man's arm, left the premises, her heart heavy with the weight of unfulfilled promises. Noma's mother, witnessing her daughter's anguish, bore the burden of her compliant city in silence. The father, on the other hand, reveled in the moment, foreseeing the gains he believed would come from this union. As the day descended into darkness, the wedding concluded. Ejike triumphant led Noma to his car and they drove away into the night, leaving the village to grapple with the aftermath of a union tainted by duty rather than love. The echoes of the somber ceremony lingered, marking the beginning of a new chapter fraught with complexities and unspoken pain. The city lights flickered as the Noma arrived at Ejike's imposing mansion. Despite the opulence that surrounded her, the memories of love with Onyebuchi haunted her, casting a shadow over her newfound life. That night, the grandeur of the mansion couldn't drown out the echoes of her sadness. Ejike, oblivious to her emotional turmoil, forcefully asserted his desires without her consent. Noma, engulfed in tears, found no solace in the extravagant surroundings. As dawn broke, Noma shattered and bruised, refused to leave the confines of her room. Ejike's aggression escalated. His fury unleashed upon her. He demanded she conform to his condition, forcing her into the kitchen to prepare meals under the threat of further abuse. The weight of his rules pressed down on her, a suffocating reality that overshadowed the once promised happiness of a marital union. Norma, trapped in a world far from the love she had known, faced an uncertain future, bound by the chains of a marriage that lacked consent and compassion. Months dragged on, and Norma found herself trapped in the confines of Ejike's mansion. 
treated more like a maid than a wife. Her family consigned for her well-being, pleaded for assistance, but Noma had nothing to offer. AGK, indifferent to her family's calls, continued to ignore the cries for help. In the village, Mr. KK, Noma's father, fell seriously ill. His health deteriorated. However, AGK remained oblivious, his focus solely on his own pursuits. Noma's mother, distraught and desperate, cried and pleaded with her daughter to ask AGK for financial help. Noma, your father is very sick. Please, ask AGK for help. We need money for his treatment. Norma, with a heavy heart, confess the harsh reality. Mama, he doesn't give me any money. I can't ask him. He will beat me. Ejike, indifferent to Norma's plight, brought another woman into the mansion, further diminishing Norma's status. She became her errand girl, a servant in her supposed home. During a tearful phone call, Norma shared her struggles with her parents. And dear my child, he will change. Just hang in there. Feeling abandoned and powerless, Norma resigned herself to a life of servitude, choosing to endure rather than confront the abuse that surrounded her. The echoes of her parents' words, though meant to provide comfort, served as a dark reminder of the isolation she faced in the grandeur of Ejike's mansion. Weeks later, the heavy burden of sadness descended upon the Norma as she received the news of her father's death. Her mother, in mourning, called to convey the somber news. Surprisingly, Ejike, who had been indifferent to Mr. Okeke's illness, sent money and everything needed for the burial. Norma, after the burial, returned home, where a confrontation with Ejike awaited her. She mustered the courage to question his heartlessness during her father's illness. However, AGK, on you, Dinana, angered by her audacity, unleashed his fury upon her. How dare you question me? Know your place. That night, Norma wept in solitude, the weight of grief and mistreatment pressing down on her. The second woman in the mansion, making life unbearable, compounded her misery. Norma, once a bride, now served as a maid in her own home, enduring the pain and sadness that seemed insurmountable. The dreams of love and happiness shattered, leaving the Norma trapped in a cycle of despair and servitude. Months later, Ejike's illicit dealings caught up with him, leading to his arrest for drug-related charges. Norma, pregnant and with no support, found herself facing the harsh realities of life alone. With no option left, she returned to her village to seek refuge with her mother and sister. Her mother, with open arms and a heart full of understanding, accepted Norma back into the fold. Welcome home, my child. We missed you. I missed the bittersweet reunion. Norma couldn't help but ask about Onyebuchi. Mama, where is Onyebuchi? I need him now more than ever. Her mother, with a heavy sigh, shared the news that Onyebuchi had traveled abroad a few months back. He left, my dear. We heard he went abroad for a better life. Norma, already burdened by the challenges life had thrown at her, felt a pang of loneliness. The absence of Onyebuchi, the one she had once thought would be her lifelong companion, added another layer of sorrow to her to Mortenio's journey. Years later, Norma's child had grown, and Norma, driven by determination for a better life, left her daughter with her mother and sister in the village to seek opportunities in the city. She found work as a cleaner in a hotel, holding on to the hope of returning with achievements that would transform their lives. One day, as she diligently cleaned, she stumbled upon Onyebuchi. Overwhelmed by emotions, she couldn't bear to face him and fled. Onyebuchi, determined to find her, inquired about her from her colleagues and set out on a mission to reunite with his lost love. Onyebuchi, located in Noma in a modest and unkept apartment where she struggled to make a living. Tears flowed freely as the memories of their shared past flooded back. Noma, on her knees, begged for forgiveness. And without hesitation, Onyebuchi embraced her with forgiveness and understanding. They hugged, gradually mending the wounds of the past. Onyebuchi, 
now a wealthy and a successful man, took Noma back to the village and officially asked for a hand in marriage. Overjoyed, Noma said yes, sealing their commitment to a shared future. Their wedding, a celebration filled with joy, echoed through the village. Noma and Onyebuchi, now reunited, traveled back to the city where Onyebuchi lived, alongside Noma's five-year-old daughter. They embarked on a journey of happiness and love, looking forward to a brighter tomorrow. Their story, once met by trials and separation, blossomed into a tale of enduring love and a happily ever after. Despite the challenges and separations, Noma and Onyebuchi's love remained steadfast, proving that genuine love can withstand the test of time and adversity.